Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another week of NFL Dynasty Picks. We are currently in week eight, coming off week seven, a, game, a week where you saw a lot of teams said that they want to go to the Super Bowl. A lot of teams said, I want to give up my chance of going to the Super Bowl. Uh, going into this week, we got five games to talk about, just like always. We're going to start off right away with Arizona going to Baltimore. Ooh. And this should be a no brainer pick. But unfortunately, Baltimore can only beat quality teams. So, I'm kind of afraid to pick them, but I'm going to pick Baltimore. You know, Arizona sucks, and oh, sucky team's the only one that can beat Baltimore right now. I don't necessarily think Arizona's a sucky team. I think Arizona shows a lot of promise in each and every single one of those games. If you actually look at their stats and you look at their games, they don't really get blown out. Uh, the biggest blowout game they've had was against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and that's because obviously they're facing the Pittsburgh Steelers, possible few, uh, Super Bowl champions, six-time world champions also. Um, that being said, Baltimore kind of got embarrassed, therefore they're going to pretty much win this game coming up um, this Sunday. However, I will have to state that it's not going to be as easy as they, uh, you think it's going to be. Arizona's definitely going to give a challenge. Watch out for Arizona next year. They can keep developing this team. They're going to be a threat, but I'm going with Baltimore on Sunday. Uh, I got the Baltimore Ravens. The defense is very good. Um, but the offense is going to get back on track. It's a very bad Arizona defense. Um, yeah, they allow Cam Newton, who is a good quarterback, to go for like 132 yards, I believe. So, that's good. The offense to get back on track. So that's a unanimous decision for Baltimore over Arizona on Sunday. For New Orleans versus St. Louis, so we're going to go with another unanimous decision as we all pick the Saints. To go over the Rams. Saints weren't looking too good last week, though. Uh, Minnesota and Carolina. Phil and Joe pick Carolina. I think that Minnesota's Christian Palmer is going to uh, come Ponder. up with a victory. Ponder Palmer tomorrow. <laughs> I think they're going to come up with a victory over the uh, Carolina Panthers. They're going to be a little too high after being the Redskins, a team that uh, is going on a downward spiral. Speaking of the Redskins, they're traveling to Buffalo, New York this week to face a very dejected Buffalo Bills. Washington and Buffalo, we are talking about this game. Uh, okay. Um, that was a surprise. Washington, I would like to pick them, but they're having a problem where they're making consistent defenses that do well just keeping drives down. They're making them good look, look good through big plays. They're making them opportunistic defenses. The problem with that is you're already going against a very opportunistic defense with Denver. Yeah. Um, see another high. Buffalo. Ooh, yeah, Denver. Me and Buffalo. See another high turnover game. We'll pick Buffalo in this one. You know, I just called him Denver twice. Twice. Uh, so you picking who? Buffalo. You are picking Buffalo? Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to go with the Buffalo Bills too. Just like I said two weeks ago, the Washington Redskins are on a downward spiral. Uh, they had their, you know, their peak already at the beginning of the season. All the Redskins fans were happy. They were rejoicing all the way around. And what happened? They faced the Philadelphia Eagles who showed them that they're not as good as they wanted to be. Carolina came in, showed them they're not as good as they want to be. And Buffalo's going to show them, hey, 6-10, and 10, buddy. 7-9 and nine and best. Buffalo Bills are watching this week. Um, honestly, I don't even know I'm, I'm still not really believe in the Bills. Uh, the defense stinks big time. Your defense um, stinks? Yeah. They leave the league with the picks. They have 14. Yeah, well, they give up a lot of yards. Yeah, very yeah. opportunistic yeah. defense. They score like they rely on the turnovers. That's, that's very interesting come from interns. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> interns are that on camera. But yeah, as I was saying, the defense stinks. Um, as long as you don't throw interceptions, you have a good chance to get their defense. And, um, yeah, uh, the Redskins are coming off of two bad games. Um, they kept it close against Philadelphia. They probably should have. Carolina just kind of ran all over us. So, I mean, ran all over them. But, um, um, How did John Beck do? I, I, I had, had, had well. what, two, two seventy nine a touchdown and a pick? And, like, ran, and ran a touchdown? Like four drops? <laughs> okay, the drops are not on him. Well, that's what I'm saying. saying. One sack fumble. That's what I'm saying. Down. Okay, but that well, wasn't really his fault. Yeah, I mean, he didn't have proper coverage. Yeah, I, I thought he, he should have been well. more aware of his He lost Santana Moss. There were also a few people in that game. Did High Tide was. I thought they were just going to run the run it down Carolina's throat and win the game right. that way. 
But even when High Tower went down, you still have Roy Hilu and Ryan Terrain. Why get away from philosophy that was working for you all game? Okay. I would, I would like to it's, say that the officiating in that game was terrible. It was a, a third down and two that Terrence Austin was clearly, clearly uh, pass interfered with. And even on the other side, to be objective, there was a really another play where, um, what is his I name, like Darrell forward. Young? Yeah, Darrell <laughs> Scott, the forward motion, that the front his route before the, uh, the plays he would call. It looked kind of like arena football. Yeah. He went for motion and just ran for his route. And it was so, okay. I mean, on both sides, I don't think it was biased. It was just a very poorly yeah, officiated yeah. game. Um, embarrassing, I would say. But, um, so it was a Washington Redskins game, is what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for your pick. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go both. I'm gonna go with the smart choice. <laughs> uh, last week, uh, you changed one of your picks just because I said something during and interrupted you. How did that work out for you? Um, they got you lost. Okay. <laughs> Forty-one seven shows you next time. Chris knows he's going. By the way, guess who won last week? All right, Jacksonville, Houston. I picked Houston. I didn't get Phil and Joel's. Who did y'all pick? Jacksonville and Houston. We'll go with Houston. Like that offense. Jacksonville. Yeah, we're not talking about it, but you know. Shit, let's talk about it now anyway. Andre Johnson, it wasn't in last week, well, Sunday, and they found a rudder game with 200 yards for Arian Foster. So. Alright, so all three of us have Houston. Indianapolis goes to Tennessee. Indianapolis coming off one of the most embarrassing losses I've ever seen in my entire uh, lifetime watching football. <laughs> Has to go to Tennessee this week, and I, I, I have to say, fool. These former Super Bowl champions are really looking pitiful, and uh, I'm not, apparently I'm not the only person that thinks that because we all pick Tennessee to pretty much be easily beat the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, the game of the week, in my opinion, in most people's opinion, uh, possible AFC champions, if not Super Bowl champions, coming out of this game. New England Patriots go to the Pittsburgh Steelers, the number one offense against the number one defense in the NFL. Who's coming out on top? Wow. Might be one of the toughest games to pick off season. <laughs> Pretty much is. Uh, I think these are two teams that bring the best out of each other. Um, it's, it's a toss-up. I'm going to go with uh, New England, though. <laughs> it's, it's tough. Oh, it is very tough. It is completely tough for me to pick Pittsburgh in this one. And let me tell you the reasons why. Pittsburgh has the number one defense in the NFL. New England defense is horrible. Ben Roethlisberger, the, the best quarterback in the NFL, in my opinion. Ben Roethlisberger, 9-1. Nine, nine touchdowns, one interception. This is a man that's on fire. This is a man that wants his third Super Bowl ring because he was robbed last year. New England Patriots the last couple games have showed that they are weak. They're strong, but they have a weakness. They can be beaten. And unlike their counterparts in the NFC right now, Green Bay Packers, which is actually special teams. But the bottom line is, New England Patriots have a weakness. Mike Tomlin and the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to expose it this week. Pittsburgh Steelers are going to show you why they are the picks for the Super Bowl this year. Pittsburgh Steelers are going to beat the New England Patriots on Sunday. You heard it here first, folks, if I didn't tell you last week or the week before. So you done? All right. Um, I'm definitely interested in hearing yours. Uh, Pittsburgh really hasn't beaten anybody, in my opinion. Um, New England... Excuse I mean, me. I, I wish this know, intern would get on camera to still have these comments. The England really isn't. I mean, I don't think it really matters what rank the Pittsburgh Steelers defense is. I mean, I think Tom Brady will overcome it. Um, actually, uh, New England actually has one of the best rushing offenses in the league. Of course, they have the normal passing offense. Um, Tom Brady, who I do not believe is the best quarterback in the league, neither do I believe Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger definitely isn't. We're talking um, about two quarterbacks that have five Super Bowl championships between them. I, I don't really care about that. Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback in the league right now. And it's, Statistics he's proving it week after week. And um, nine and one will ask for names. Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> nah, he hasn't had to build on the Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. Super Bowl league. champions coming up. Go ahead. <laughs> Green Bay's on the bottom. I don't know why we're mentioning Green Bay. Screw Green Bay. Uh, I'm not mentioning Green Bay. I'm just mentioning that Aaron Rodgers is awesome. Whatever. <laughs> and, uh, other than that, yeah, I'm picking the winner this week because I just I don't really believe in the Steelers. Well, there you have it, folks. The reason why I'm coming back and the reason I'm about to be number one is because the smart picks like this, Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going to have to work this weekend, and I'm very disappointed. 
I really want to change my schedule because I want to be there when Pittsburgh beats New England and put it all over Twitter and Facebook. Uh, Twitter, the villain five one five. Facebook, www.facebook backslash Doctor Advice five one five. The New England, New England, Pittsburgh, smart pick. Cincinnati goes to Seattle this week. We all pick Cincinnati with the exception of Joe, who picked Seattle to uh, come up with a victory over the Bengals. Cleveland travels to San Francisco. Uh, one of my coworkers feels like San Francisco is the smart money pick to go to the Super Bowl this year. Uh, we all believe they can beat Cleveland, though. I'm not sure about that Super Bowl pick. <laughs> Dallas versus Philadelphia. Sunday Night Football. What you got? Uh, tough one. I wonder if the interns going to have a comment for this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with Philly on this one. Um, they seem to be getting it back on track. And the, the, talent, the talent there is just hard to bet against, even with the record that they have. Um, and I have zero faith in Tony Romo. So I'm going to pick Philly. He definitely <laughs> does have comments that, that enter. The dynamic Philadelphia Eagles are going to have a tough one on Dallas. In Dallas. Uh, it is not going to be an easy fight for either one of the teams. It can go either way. This is one of the first times I honestly believe that Dallas has a chance to beat Philadelphia. But it's not happening. The Philadelphia Eagles are going to beat Dallas and this is the reason why. Andy Reid had a bye week. Andy Reid has a bye week and he decided I'm going to sit you all down and this is the game plan we need to do to show us why we're going to win the NFC East. The NFC East is wide open right now. Why? Because the Washington Redskins are on a downward, downward spiral and the New York Giants are starting to show their true colors. Philadelphia needs this victory more than Dallas. Philadelphia will get this victory get this over one. Dallas. Can you can have a comment all you want, intern. Okay? Right, this yes. time, don't fall out the chair. This is why. <laughs> you have to pay on Will's height. <laughs> <laughs> this is why the Eagles are not going to win. One, they have the worst rush defense in the league. 135 yards a game they're giving up. Two, DeMarco Murray, that is ran for 253 yards. Ninth most all time in NFL history. Four, Miles Austin, okay. Des Bryant, okay. Jason Witten, okay. Austin Wall sucks. He couldn't cover a bed, okay. <laughs> Asante's washed up. They're looking to trade him, okay. After the trade deadline? Tomorrow. That's, all. Go, That's all I gotta say. Cowboys, 28, Eagles, 14. I'm gone. And much like Dallas' playoff implications, he came and he went. <laughs> Joe. Um, I'm going to take it back to reality here. Uh, Dallas, they have a really good run defense, but I think the way that number eight, Michael seven. Vick, the number seven, plays, the way he wants the football, it doesn't even really matter, you know, how good their run defense is. I mean, Not to mention, stop the run. has one of the best offenses. We have a rushing offense in the NFL. Yeah, they're, they're going to stop in the run of, like, running backs. But they're not going to be able to stop Michael Vick. And, they, I mean, the Eagles are still desperate right now. So, I mean, at home. They're even being desperate. They found, a, they're they found their red defense. I got to go with Philly. I mean, I'm sorry. It's nothing against Dallas. It's just Phyllis is going to win. Can I get in on this? You already got in on this. Right, look. <laughs> stop prolonging. I just said they had a good run defense. All right, we all picked Philadelphia. To uh, defeat the Dallas Cowboys this week. Sorry, Alex, who could not be here with us as he cut his hair too. I hope we can get this on video. Uh, he did? Yeah, he cut yeah. his hair. Miami versus New York Giants. We all picked the Giants to defeat Miami Dolphins. Detroit versus Denver. Detroit coming off another heartbreaking loss, but we expect them to rebound against Denver on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Last game, we're going to talk about Monday Night Football game. Hopefully, more interesting than this past Monday Night Football game. The San Diego Chargers visits the Kansas City Chiefs. What do you have? Kansas City, at psych, San Diego. Um, I think they uh, get fired up off, the, off of that heartbreaking loss to the Jets. Um, they can go back to tape and see how they were pretty much exposed. Go to a playing team with a less talented defense, and even with their superstars pretty much injured and trying to play through injuries, I think they can work that around and... Get up, a, get up enough of a game plan to be the be a injury riddle. Uh, Kansas City defense. So we'll go with San Diego. I'm going with San Diego as well. Even though they really disappointed me last week. I mean, how you blow that lead on something that they really should have won. Uh, K 
Kansas City Chiefs, you know, they're an upset team in my opinion, but I don't think they're going to be able to upset San Diego this week. If maybe if San Diego won last week, they had an opportunity, but uh, unfortunately San Diego lost. So I'm going to go with San Diego Chargers. Um, Phillip Rivers, uh, I think he has been easily the most disappointing quarterback of any other quarterbacks that I've seen this year. Um, he was, he came into the season as the second highest rated passer in NFL history, and uh, he's now dropped based on this year. Uh, he was 16-3, to three, two passing last week, and uh, one touchdown, one interception. I know because he's on my fantasy team, he screwed me over, as well as uh, Pittsburgh's defense has screwed me over every week, as well as Felix Jones. <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to lie, I kind of have a bias against some of these players and teams, but um, who are we talking about? San yeah, Diego. San Diego. Uh, you still gotta go with you still gotta go with uh, the Chargers. I mean, Kansas City Saints. Like, um, Philip Rivers doesn't have uh, his top two receivers. One is pretty much out for the but, season. But, I mean, last Jason year, Jason Jackson, who people could just double and possibly triple team. Antonio Gates is playing He's through injuries. He's a man. He's back. The uh, intern just told <laughs> Phil. This <laughs> what? Yeah, Antonio Gates is back. And I mean, yeah, even he, with the injuries last year, Philip Rivers still. He's still. Philip Rivers still mm -hmm. was a great quarterback through the injuries last year. Right. This year, Almost there's something years. else. I've heard rumors that he might have an injury, but I can he is not he performing injuries too. But you need talent around you if your top talent is hurt or no. not in the game at all. He is not performing at the level that Philip Rivers needs to perform at. <laughs> Especially him as my preseason MVP pick. He is, he is, he is not it right now. But okay. He may I'm, be bad. Mr. Jackson just came off injury. Lincoln mm -hmm. Dunay got to um, got released. Well, well, what was he known for last year, Philip Rivers? His he arm. Was known for the guy who he had all these same injuries last year, and you know Vincent Jackson was holding out. And he still was one of the best quarterbacks in the league this year. He also had a left tackle. The left tackle for San Diego was out too. I mean, there's no one's protecting this blind side, and he doesn't have the talent there that he had last year. I can understand him, his own um, numbers taking the fall. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to be nice to anybody <laughs> at this point. I don't yeah, sell that. San Diego. San Diego. Yeah, we, I found that out five minutes ago. Uh, but that's it for our uh, picks this week. Uh, as always, we thank you for watching. We want to know what you pick. Do you think you have what it takes to beat us? I'm pretty sure you have what it takes to beat these two. I doubt you have what it takes to beat me. Uh, but we do want to hear what you have to say, so keep watching. Record. If you haven't subscribed to our video, our YouTube page, youtube.com backslash to the dynasty, I will also give you our updates. I'm going to do this week. I apologize for that. Also, next week, much to the chagrin of our editor and our director, this is going to make him upset, but because it's half week, we are going to have two videos next week. Not only are we going to have our uh, picks, but we're also going to have our uh, predictions half year review. So, for Phil... For Joel and for myself, thank you for watching. Enjoy football. <laughs>